UC Davis biologists have found an easy way to make haploid, haploid plants. Uh, are plants that only have chromosomes from one parent, uh, whereas normally um, plants just like us have um, chromosomes from both their mother and from their father. And um, when we make a new plant variety by crossing together um, two parents that have a combination of helpful traits and we try to combine those, those um, useful traits, um, we have to take the offspring of that cross and inbreed them for many generations so that we make um, a true breeding variety. Um, and so by making haploid plants, those are plants that only have chromosomes from one parent, we um, instantly make a plant that has presumably a combination of the helpful traits from its uh, original grandparents, um, but is immediately true breeding. And so we save many generations of, um, of time. The discovery came by accident. When we uh, cross two plants, um, we should have the genes from both parents mm -hmm. in the progeny because we get one version of every gene from our mother and one from our father. And we discovered in the plants that we were growing that a seemingly impossible thing had occurred. There were plants that only had chromosomes from one of their parents, the normal wild type parent, and didn't appear to have any genes from the parent that we had altered a chromosome protein um, in, in that strain. And so um, what we later uh, figured out is that um, the chromosomes from both parents were meeting after fertilization, but one set was being selectively discarded. And so that is how we make plants that only have the chromosomes from one of their parents. Well, one obvious idea was that we had just had some other seeds fall into the pot because the seeds of the plant we work with are exceedingly small. Um, but then the result happened again and um, we had some other indications that there was something extremely strange going on. And I really have to give credit to my postdoctoral fellow, um, Ravi, who had the insight to figure out what was happening. It's a big advance for plant breeding. Plant breeders currently make thousands of haploids every year for selected crops, but those methods are often very limited in terms of the particular varieties to which they can be applied. And so our method relies on um, a chromosome protein, which is present in every um, plant, in fact in every um, higher order form of life. And so um, we hope that by engineering this protein in any plant, we can make haploids um, for crops which are currently impossible. Farmers worldwide could benefit. I guess we hope it'll be a democratizing technology, particularly for breeders in the developing world who are working with crops where tissue culture is very expensive or where haploid production methods just have not been available. I guess you could subdivide our future goals into two big categories. One is to bring the method into many, many new plants. Um, and a lot of that will be in collaboration with other teams. And then the second major goal is to study the process and to understand the basic science that underlies it so we can both improve it and also maybe uh, even discover new plant breeding methods.